In this video, I'm going to review Lime Messengers, specifically used for swift water rescue operations. If you're not already familiar with what a Lime Messenger is, it's basically a ballistic, a pneumatic, or human power device that can be used to deploy a smaller diameter and lighter weight line across the river to an opposing shoreline so that a heavier and larger rope or mainline can be pulled across the waterway so that you can set up either a rope retrieval system, a tension diagonal, a high line, or some type of bow tether system. One of the problems though that fire departments can encounter when purchasing a commercially made system, especially some of the pneumatic devices that are on the market, is the price. These systems can be as high as $3,500, making them cost prohibitive for many departments to purchase. So in this video, I'm going to focus more on the simple systems which are much less expensive but still can provide effective deployment distances. One of the most basic line throwing devices is a rope throw bag. Throw bags can come in a variety of different styles and configurations and can range anywhere from 50 to over 100 feet in length. Not really a line messenger per se because the rope used in most throw bags is 3 eighths in diameter making it heavier and giving it an effective range of anywhere from 50 to 70 feet. Nonetheless, if you're dealing with shorter distances, a rope throw bag can be used as a line messenger. If greater distances are required, you're going to want to use a true line messenger. This is a commercially made setup that sells for approximately $100. A true line messenger is going to have some type of weighted object attached to a smaller diameter and lighter weight line. This is a 150 foot system, but its real effective range is actually a little over 100 to 135 feet, depending on the training and the experience of the operator. The weighted ball attached to the smaller diameter line, in this case 3 millimeter nylon, is what allows you to obtain greater distances than just a standard rope throw bag. This is a homemade setup that I put together for about $50. It's a 140 foot system and is very similar to the commercially made setup. Using a bucket though instead of a bag creates less resistance on the rope during deployment and helps you achieve slightly greater distances. Besides this, the homemade setup was half the cost of a commercially made. This is another homemade line messenger that I was able to assemble for about $25. It's a smaller component of a larger system that I'm going to review later in this video. Right now I want to take you through a deployment method that I refer to as a Bill Matney technique which will allow you to hand throw this device and achieve distances in excess of 150 feet. Here's a close up on how to rig your shot for the Matney technique. You're going to take a bite of rope go through the ring let this knot flip over like so and then you're going to take the line that leads to your bucket or bag and come back over the top you want to place both these lines or sections of the line on your index and middle finger at the first joint of your throwing hand the other thing that I'd recommend is that you wear a tight fitting leather glove which will give you a little bit more protection. I've actually ripped open the skin on my index finger during deployment. Having that glove on will give you a little bit more protection as you're whipping the rope around. Once you have the line set up properly, you can get ready for your throw. The technique that Bill uses is more of a helicopter spin where he brings the rope over his head, spins it around almost like the blades of a helicopter. And he's whipping this around at the same time he's letting rope extend through his fingers out the bucket until you get an arc or a diameter of 20 to 30 feet. Once you obtain that, you, then you can release the ball. Now he's an expert. He obtains distances of, of 200 feet routinely and very accurately. Uh, myself, uh, I'm really not that good. I'm more of a novice. I use more of a, a side slash underarm technique where I'll take it from the side and whip it around like so until I get a, an arc or diameter of about 10 feet and then I'll release it. I can't get the same distances as, as Matney, but uh, I'm a little bit more accurate 
uh, myself with that underarm sidearm technique. This is Bill Manny demonstrating his technique. He uses a slightly different line messenger than what I'm showing in this video, but this is the distance that he can achieve. Full throw. 200 feet. With the line messenger that I'm using, a sidearm throw works best for me. You're going to spin the ball around while playing out rope until you achieve a circle about 10 foot in diameter. Once you have the velocity you want, you're going to release the rope in line with your intended target. With either method, you can see that you're going to need significant space and clearance to be able to spin the rope around. The last setup that I want to go through is the slingshot system. It incorporates the 250 foot line messenger that I just demonstrated. Here's a quick overview of the system. This is a setup that I was able to assemble for approximately $100. The entire system is stored in a 2.5 gallon plastic bucket, which makes it relatively compact and easy to carry to your deployment location. When we look at each component individually, to start off with we have a face shield for the operator. Now the reason this is available is you need to take into consideration that the slingshot is like a giant rubber band. And just like any piece of equipment it can fail. In the unlikely event that would happen, the shield protects the operator's uh, face and eyes. The slingshot itself is really a heavy duty water balloon launcher. The only thing that was added to it was one inch tubular webbing and carabiners to each handle. The webbing is available for us to set the system up. It's our policy for no one to hold it during deployment. We actually want to attach to a fixed object, and the webbing allows us to do that. We release one side. The webbing is doubled back onto itself, so we can attach to anchors that are closer together, as narrow as three feet. If we had anchors that are farther apart, up to 30 feet, we can release the carabiner, and we have the full length of each anchor leg. On each side, it's 12 and a half feet. So you can see where we can obtain distances of up to 30 feet when we secure and the launch is stretched out. Also in the large bucket are the individual shots themselves. These both are identical. Each shot contains 250 feet of 550 cord. Now the 550 cord just designates its strength and it has approximately a 550 pound breaking strength. On one end of the cord, which is about three millimeters, you have what looks to be a red tennis ball, but it's actually not. This is a, an arborist ball, which is specifically designed for throwing a line. Uh, this ball itself weighs a little over 14 ounces. The webbing is securely fastened to the ball, and then you have a ring where the line is attached to. On the terminal end, we have an aluminum carabiner. And this is used once the shot is fired across the river, we can take this carabiner, attach it to our larger rope or line, and the team that's on the opposing side can drag it across to set up for whatever we need to, whether it's a high line, tension, diagonal, boat tether, uh, or a retrieval system. The other thing that can be done with the carabiners, and it's recommended, is that you fasten both terminal ends together. And the reason for this is the slingshot can give you a full deployment throw. In other words, you could get a, a 250 uh, foot deployment with this. So, so you don't lose a line. By attaching both shots together, you have a little bit more redundancy and you have a total of 500 feet. The reason we have two shots is if your initial throw was off or deployment was off, you, you got it hooked up in a, in a canopy, trees, branches, whatever it may be, or it didn't make it across the riverbed, you have the ability for a secondary deployment. To rig the slingshot, remember you can attach the anchors anywhere from 3 to 30 feet apart. Just use the amount of webbing that you feel is necessary. There's no specific way to tie off the webbing, but try to fasten to the anchor at least 6 feet off the ground. This will give you the optimum angle of trajectory, which is about 30 to 45 degrees. If the system is rigged properly, there should be no twists in either side of the slingshot. Once you have the system set up the way you want it, place the ball on the saddle. As mentioned earlier, the next step 
is to connect both shots together. It isn't necessary to wrap the rope around the anchor as shown here. This just adds for more security and helps prevent you from losing the second shot. To launch the line messenger, cup the projectile in one hand while holding the handle of the saddle with the other. The farther you pull back, the greater the distance you'll achieve. This was a near full distance deployment, with the impact being at the 240 mark and the ball coming to rest at the curb 250 feet away from the launch site. I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching.